carry this battery in my pocket, this battery in my backpack, and this battery with two hands. What a beast. With Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, this is more than just a portable battery. How many ways can it be charged? And how many things can be charged by it? If there's a power outage, can I run my 3D printers and even my desktop PC to keep working? And what about my number one tech need when I'm out in the bush with my mate Skip? Today we're gonna to explore why I need a portable power station and why you may too. Up front, today's video is sponsored by EcoFlow and they've sent me this to keep, which I'm stoked about. I've literally had them on my list to buy a portable power station from this summer. So now I can test and show you, does it do everything I wished it could do? Now the number one question I get from friends and family is, how long does it last? Saying it's a 1024 watt hour model doesn't seem to help. So I've lined up some tests for my devices and I'll show you how to calculate for your devices. Oh, actually, that's such a good grip. Let's go. I've made two initial observations about the Delta II. At 12 kilograms, I can carry it with one handle, but my wife will appreciate there being two. But these dual handles double as tie down points for transport or bike locks. And the other standout feature is the ports are on the slim sides. So it slides in perfectly next to my laser cutter and I still have access unlike other EcoFlow models or most competitors that put ports on the long side. Let's get one thing straight. This isn't a big dumb battery. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, which means I can use an app on my phone to adjust various settings. I can set minimum and maximum charge levels to prolong battery health or change charging speeds by reducing them so the cooling fans don't kick in at night or crank it to the max 1200 watts so it reaches 80% in 49 minutes or 100% charge in 63 minutes. Now, I've just had solar panels installed on my roof, so I would like to use excess solar energy to charge the battery to then run my machines. Now, I've got a plan on how I'm gonna program that later thanks to Wi-Fi, but before that, let's test how long I can run each machine for. All right, ooh, 1,140 watts, that jumped huge. So the nozzle's currently at temperature, so it's only using 54 watts. So you see these little spikes here, 177, back down to 60. I reckon those spikes are the nozzle heating up to keep it temp, or the build plate heating up to keep it temp. So many different variables will come into account, but this would get me six hours of printing. There we have it, after 20 minutes of preparation and printing, we use 7% of the built-in battery. What about the laser cutter? My laser cutter has a 55 watt CO2 tube plus motors and other parts, including my external 100 watt fume extraction duct fan. Engraving at 15% power with 400 millimeters second speed should last me three hours. But cutting at 100% power with 27 millimeters second speed would only get me one and a half hours. Right, laser cutting the gingerbread man was about 9% of battery. The fume extraction alone was just under 100 watts. I could slow that fan speed down, but at the same time, the cutting and engraving power can vary depending on jobs. But that's pretty cool, right? And it also means I can plug in other things like corded tools. This 1200 watt power tool is under the 1800 watt load limit, so now I can use it anywhere. What do you think, Brucey? Pretty cool? Dude. Buying V-mount batteries for these lights is like so expensive. 172 watts. It's about four to five hours at a full charge with full brightness. This is normally at 20% in the studio, which is only 36 watts. Now I can just run it anywhere from this. All right, oi dude, I've got so much stuff to test charging. See at the back, you've got your AC plugs, but below that you've got a 12 volt DC car charger. That's 10 amps, so 126 watts output and a couple of DC barrel jacks around the front. We've got two USB-A at 12 watts, two USB-A fast charge at 18 watts, and two USB-C at 100 watts. And so, for slow USB-A charging, I should better plug in this camera. Okay, for my drone, I reckon the controller is probably fine with a slow charge. Oh, well, that was a fast charge port. All right, we're up to nine watts. Drone itself, fast charge port for you. And then the rest of my drone batteries also go in a USB-A. We're at 33 watts collective. This power bank, 77, big jump. Now, my laptop can charge over USB-C. Jump to 142. All right, we've got six hours of charging. 
what I reckon is, let me take my super note here, which I've got my notes on, but then plug my laptop into the AC charger. Let's just acknowledge it's charging. We jump to 168. And it gets even crazier if you start plugging in AC to DC chargers, You're just a wall charger. Now I've got a bunch more USB ports to charge more devices. I'm curious though, what happens if we overload this? So the Delta II has an 1800 watt max load, but it can boost up to 2200 watts. Full. 1790. I don't think I could have found something that's closer to the limit. I know a hairdryer will do it. That starts to pull it up. One point, uh, it's 2.2 now. If I go max heat, trips it. Cool. I can just turn AC back on. 1.7 liters of boiled water. That's insane, man. And then you can just unplug, take it anywhere. Oh, I love it. What if there's a power outage and I just want to use my PC, screen, keyboard and mouse? This is blowing my mind. I can actually edit and render video for like, what, at least two hours. Yeah, I'm shocked. I can browse the web and watch YouTube videos for over six hours. Oh, mate, Cam just drops in on a battery bank. Oh, a double kill. I'm on fire. Literally what? I could play games for two hours on my desktop PC. I was expecting this to be pulling way more. I guess the game's not the heavy. I am blown away. I'm impressed. Very happy chat. I've just had the thought, let's see what the whole desk uses. Desk to max brightness. This is close enough to put one of the tube lights in. And my studio light. <laughs> We're only at 287 watts. The desk is at max brightness. My computer's on. The screen, a touch screen, stream deck. Even the backlight of my keyboard's on. You can't even see it. Everything else is so bright. I'm just so happy to know, like one of my biggest fears switching back to a desktop PC was if there's a power outage and I have files that haven't backed up to the cloud yet, but I need to send them off somewhere. I can, I've got like six hours just working normally. That's genuinely so freaking cool. Okay, so how do you calculate the size of battery you need for your devices? EcoFlow have some averages on their website for a 1024 watt hour battery. But to do the calculations, the easiest way is to have a device that tells you how many watts. So this fan says it's 1800 to 2000 watts. So with a 1024 watt hour battery divided by a 2000 watt device, well, it's pretty much 0.5, so half an hour. Let's plug it in, crank each setting to absolute max. I saw it just go from 30 minutes down to 29, so half an hour. But if I slow down the fan for any of the settings to not be at maximum, for example, just turn off the heating, 33 hours, because I've turned the heating off, it's just running the fan. And so you can't really tell the energy of each setting unless you test it. Now, some devices like this adapter will only tell you the voltage and amps. Volts times amps equals watts. So in the case of this DC adapter, 24 volts times 1.5 amps is 36 watts. If you have a smart power plug at home with energy monitoring, I recommend just plugging in all of your devices and changing their powers and speed to figure out how much they consume. Now, if we rearrange the equation, we can figure out amp hours. So 1024 watt hours divided by 12 volts equals 85 amp hours. That means we could run a 12 volt device at one amp for 85 hours. That's important for four wheel drive people. But what about charging batteries like a phone? Well, my Pixel 8 Pro has a 4,950 milli amp hour battery. So if we use our equation, that's 4.95 amp hours multiplied by a cell voltage of 3.89, making this a 19.25 watt hour battery. And so if we divide the Delta 2's capacity by my Pixel 8 Pro's capacity, we end up with 53 charges. Gosh, that's such a painful thing to do. And that's not even right because there's energy loss when going from one battery to another from the efficiency of the charger, but it's close enough. Well, actually, we can't forget the batteries degrade over time. Now this has a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is modern technology really good. It's rated to be above 80% capacity after 3000 cycles. That is over eight years of a daily battery cycle. 
And so I'm not sure why I was surprised when I read this has a five-year warranty. Five-year warranty. That's a long warranty, eh? I don't have a single other battery-powered device with a five-year warranty. And what's cool is that although you could buy a bigger or smaller power station, you can also just plug in an extra battery to double or triple the original capacity. But you may not even need extra capacity because you can charge this when away from home. Okay, so I plugged in a 12 volt car charger accessory and in my car, it's charging at 103 watts. It's gonna take seven hours from the 40% to completely charge, but you can get an alternator direct hardwire kit. So if I was doing multi-day trips, going between locations, that's a no-brainer to ensure I can top up the battery if it's overcast weather conditions. But what if you have perfect weather and it's sunny? Oh, that was easy. Hundred and eighty-three watts, and I haven't even adjusted them yet. That's sick. This is such a genius idea. They put a dot on a piece of glass in front of a circle. So if you align the dot from the shadow into the circle, then the panels are perfectly facing the sun. So simple. Dead on now at that angle. So what have I got? 221. No clouds. It's partially behind cloud. 70 watts. Oh, the wind's kicking up. And I'm gonna add to this pack is a set of tent pegs and some sandbags. These are my first ever portable solar panels. So it was cool to see the connectors are waterproof. So I can leave the panels out in the weather and then with a three and a half meter of included cable length, have the power station undercover. If you already have solar panels, but they don't terminate to an XT60i port, you can get an Anderson plug adapter from EcoFlow to plug them into the Delta II. Just be aware, it has a 500 watt max solar input. And if you're a solar nerd, the Delta II has MPPT or maximum power point tracking for optimized solar charging. But what about the panels that I already have on my roof? Well, if I look at the app for my solar inverter, I can see between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. I'm feeding back excess energy at 20% of the price compared to buying it from my energy provider. And so I found the app that I can actually schedule the times when this is allowed to charge itself from the wall. And I can even lower its charging speed in winter when there's less excess. And so I'm kind of charging this at 80% off electricity costs to run my machines at 80% off electricity costs. However, if I power this off manually, it disables the automatic charging schedule. So it may be more reliable to use a smart wall plug for scheduling charging. Actually, if I go full nerd, I found on GitHub a home assistant plugin for the EcoFlow power stations and the Delta II was on the list. So in theory, I could program a home assistant server to tell the Delta II through Wi-Fi when to charge and at the exact rate of excess solar energy thanks to real-time data from my solar inverter. That's a job for future cam to figure out because right now, this dude is fully charged and I'm gonna try something that I've been dreaming of doing. A couple years ago, I switched to an e-bike and it's been the best decision. The battery drains depending on how much assistance you set. That means minimal assistance on the way down that was sick. and then crank it up for the ride up. This way, I can ride further for longer, which means more fun. But on a multi-day trip, you need somewhere to charge. How many bars you got? Three. I got five. two out of five. I've been dreaming of this day. To be able to plug in and charge our e-bikes where there is no power. Charging in the bush. Okay. 
Whilst I was cooking lunch, the temperature dropped and it started to rain. I think I need to buy the weatherproof cover. But for now, I just moved everything under the bench so it's easier to unplug if it starts raining again. Burger on it? Yeah. The charging speeds are fully dependent on the charger and battery of each bike, but if both bikes were dead flat, they'd require 1,008 watt hours of energy to fully charge. There'll be some energy loss in conversion, but the Delta II's 1,024 watt hour battery should be able to charge both. Dude, that actually is a full trip. This has 65% battery life left. My brother's bike's fully charged. My bike has got one bar left. Oh, fuck out. All right, let's load the, let's back up. <laughs> back up and go, it's freezing. <laughs> We've done the test. Okay, whoa. Improvements. <laughs> uh, the display flickers at low AC loads. If it bothers you, you just reduce the screen timeout in the app, so if you're sleeping next to it, you won't see it. Fan noise, it is noticeable. Okay, microphone is one meter away. These are the fans at a low speed facing you. Crank it to maximum charge speeds. It will ramp up, simulating as well having a maximum output. My laser cutter is louder than that, so it's not a problem, but if you're sleeping next to it, you definitely want it on the quiet charging mode and not have a huge amount of power being drawn at that time. You know, if they can make quieter fans in the future, that won't hurt anyone. And uh, UPS, uninterrupted power supply. See, my PC is currently plugged in to the Delta II. The Delta II is plugged into the wall, but because it's fully charged, it's just passing the wall power through to my PC. But in a power outage, if we yanked out the power, it's now gonna to switch to battery power. That was actually done in less than 30 milliseconds. Now, that was fine for my PC, but some servers and workstations won't like 30 milliseconds of transfer. But I have actually seen that the Delta III range is starting to come out overseas, and that is sub 10 milliseconds. All right, price for the Delta II is 1,300 Australian dollars. Now, if I had bought this myself, I'd be stoked. Like it's done everything that I've wanted it to. I can plug in tools, machinery, lighting, anything's been made portable as long as it's under that low rating. Now for the trips with my brother to charge his bike and mine, the Delta II Max at double the capacity would probably be better. But at the same time, I can just plug in an extra battery into the expansion port and double this unit's capacity. So there's options there. I'm curious to know, what would you use something like this for? Because I'm surprised I can run my desktop PC for six hours, like that's insane. Um, I'll drop a link in the description to the EcoFlow range. They're giving me a discount code as well, so I'll put that down there for you. If you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it, and I'll catch you in my three day no internet e-bike trip or this video here. Thank you for watching the whole video. Bye.